Today's guest had an amazing, storied boxing career, both as an amateur and professional. He is a 1988 Olympic silver medalist, a six-time junior flyweight world champion, and a legend of the fight game. The Little Hands of Stone was a dominant force and face of the fight game throughout the 1990s. Let's get right into it, because we're excited to talk with Manitas de Piedra, Michael Carbajal. Welcome to Title Unboxed. With more than 40 years of experience in the fight game, our host, Doug Ward, will be covering every corner of the ring as we get comfortable between the ropes. We'll talk with both the lesser knowns and the legends, discuss boxing's rich history and current state of the game. We'll also look at today's latest innovations, equipment breakdowns, and insights you won't uncover anywhere else. Join us now as we take a look inside Title Unboxed. Michael, welcome to Title Unboxed. Well, thank you. Thank you, Doug. I appreciate it. It's great having you here. Thank you. You know, one of our overarching goals of Title Unboxed is to share interesting insights and stories of boxing, but also, um, you know, some learning from the experiences like fighters like you have had. You've had such a such a, a, a wide breadth of experiences in and out of the ring. I think coaches and fighters have can learn a lot from this conversation. Yes. Yes. I'm, whenever you're ready, Doug. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start out with you. With before we get into your amateur career, which is pretty extensive, um, how did little young Michael Carbajal get started in boxing? I started when I was. I started competing when I was fourteen. But um, the story my father gave me is he said I, about when I was six years old that um, he that I wanted to fight. And then before my first fight, it was funny because he came up to me right before my first fight, my first amateur fight. He said, do you remember what you told me? I said, and he goes, you remember what you told me when you were, when I was, when you were six years old? And I said, no, I can't remember that. <laughs> and then he goes, well, you said you're going to be a world champion and you're going to retire world champion. And I said, wow. I said that? And I'm like, Wow. So it, wow. was, it was just crazy. And that was right before my first fight. So I thought he was just, you know, when I look back at it, I said, oh, he was just giving me that confidence right before my first fight. So, but you spoke it into reality. Yeah. Great it, lesson in that. It came out, yeah, it yeah. came out. It came out to happen. And I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of that. Yeah. Now, now did your father start out as your trainer initially? Yes, my father, he he's about taught me everything. At what point did your brother step in? He stepped in when I was 14. Okay. All right. But, and you, you won a lot of a, a lot of amateur championships together. You won the, uh, you know, the 1986 Golden Gloves, uh, the Pan Am Games in 1987, right? Yeah, that, that, that's right. But um, he's my strange brother now, so I rather yeah. not put him in sport. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, there there might be some things to talk about about you know if you don't mind uh, things fine, fighters right. can learn fighters can learn about you know how to trust people how to set up their right. their, their their support right. system. That's so right. We'll, we'll get into that later if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. So all of that that the all of your amateur career led up to the nineteen eighty eight Olympics. Um, in uh you you shared that with uh let's see who all was in that team it was a uh, pretty extensive it was uh i, I can name them so, all you said riddick bow you got you have and i was at 106 arthur johnson was 112 kennedy mckinney yeah. was 119 kelsey banks was 125 132 was romales alice 147 was oh 139 uh, Todd Foster 147 was Kenny Gould uh, 156 Roy Jones 165 Anthony Hembrick at 178 um, Andrew Maynard and heavyweight wow. was Ray Mercer and um, super heavyweight was Riddick Ball. What an incredible lineup! Yeah, that was we had a great team, really great team. And some of those guys went on to become world champions. Some didn't. What, right. in your opinion, spelled the difference between those that really made it and were accomplished versus those that maybe kind of fell short, like a Kelsey Banks, for instance? Um, I don't know. You know, it just uh, I don't like to um, compare like that, but 
Um, I think the ones that that um, just stood motivated and um, just worked very hard at it um, had the better careers and uh, successful careers. How about that? Yeah. Not better. Yeah. I don't yeah. like to say that, but that's the way it goes. Well, aside from the experience in the ring, what do you think you took from that that experience, uh, that Olympic, that big Olympic experience on that big stage into the prof- professional ranks with you? It was um, it was unbelievable. Olympics was way probably one of the most things I um, I really enjoyed. And I mean, it still brings tears tears, and I get emotional about it when I talk about it because I was not really fully um, just motivated to be an Olympic team or anything that just came about because really I just love to fight. I would, I've always wanted to be a world champion and um, as a professional, and that's what really why I was fighting for it in the, in the get go. So um, everything else just came along with it. And I think that's because of all the hard work that I put into it and I just love fighting. So I just went about how, we just, it just came out like that. You know, yeah. I really never thought about the Pan Am Games nor the Olympics. That's, and as um, soon as I was winning the national championships and it came near it, then I said, well, I'm going for it. Yeah, amazing. And right out of the Olympics, you got signed by Top Rank. Right. Bob Arum, that crew. That was very, um, I was very grateful to Richard Sandoval who um, was a fighter and world champion. Yep. Me and him were talking during the time and he worked for top rank. So that's how I got in with top rank. And yeah. as a lighter weight, as a lighter weight class, you know, it was not a big money thing or no, no kind of stuff like that. They never thought anything that it was going to break out like that, but right. it happened. And um, even when I look back, I, I really never thought about the money. I just wanted Look, I'm going to be world champion. That's all it is to it. I just love to fight. Get me in there and we'll follow it through. Yeah. Well, we'll come back to it. But you changed that. You changed the money dynamics of, of the littler guys in the sport. Yes. Yes. Is, I, it was, uh, it's unbelievable. And when I look back, I never thought of it like that. But um, I opened yeah. it up for all the lighter weight classes. And uh, that's a great, great feeling. Huge accomplishment. Yes. I mean, precedent setting. Yes, great. Very. So seven, seven months after the Olympic, February 1989, <clears throat> you debut on uh, national television um, on the undercard of your idol, uh, Roberto Duran, who is coming out of, uh, you know, kind of a rocky, rocky time to beat um, Iran Barkley. Oh, that was magnificent. I mean, that, that had to be. That, that was unbelievable. I yeah. mean. Here I am fighting on the undercard of my idol. I, I, you know, I've watched him fight. I've watched him fight since he was a lightweight, and I just followed his whole career. And then I end up being on the undercard, and I'm just like, oh, it was just unbelievable. I mean, I look back and I said, man, look how everything just happened. Yeah. And that's with a lot of hard work. And that's what I like to tell all the kids that are coming up. It's a hard work, discipline dedication, determination, and and you loving that, loving to fight will take you all the way wherever you want to go. Yeah, applying that hard work and discipline, I mean, that makes things happen. Oh, yes, it does. It, it, it does for everything also. As so you that, that was, that had to be a pinch yourself moment. It's like, am I really here? Did you watch the Duran fight then after after you fought? Oh, yeah, I watched the Duran. Historic. I was, I was just uh, so happy for him. Because he was going through the rough time and yeah. the things that he went through in his career, and he was coming back and to win that middleweight title from Iran. And Iran, Iran was a bad man. So he, he was. I love Iran Barkley too. I got to meet him, and um, we stood um, to a friends. You know, we see each other, and we respect each other. And uh, I, I love Iran. He's he bad dude, man. He's bad. Well, he's a little underrated if you compare him to his contemporaries in, in that in that those weight divisions and that that time period. Oh yes, but you know, Iran's a big. Now that's a big middleweight. Iran was yeah, big, yo, yeah, very very strong. Yeah, I mean, he, he was tearing it up. I love Iran. 
the Blade. What's up, Blade? <laughs> <laughs> so that debut was against Will Grisby. What do you remember about that fight, aside from the the Duran aspect of it and that that memorial, that you know, history making moment? That that was a tough fight. Um, Will Grisby, who later on became a world champion, oh, also. Yeah. So um, that was that was a very tough fight, and um, I knew I had pulled it out. It was it was pretty close, but I knew I I thought I took the last two rounds pretty pretty um, not not like I, I tore him up or anything like that. But yeah. I had that knockdown also in the in the um, final round, so that yeah. helped helped that, out. That had, to, that had to clinch it. That, that had to clinch it, right? Yeah. So so it was you, it was close. It was a close yeah. fight. But that knockdown did it all. But that's a good learning experience fight when you're when you're not just coasting through guys, you know. Right. Right. So you get a little bit more out of it. I did. I learned, and I I learned throughout throughout just going throughout my career with top rank. They did a great job. I mean, yeah, unbelievable job. I still tell all the fighters, you guys go with top rank, man. They're the best promoters right now, and well, throughout throughout. Yeah. throughout there's and they're still in there they're still well, doing it they are well and their guidance on your career and just the impact you made um certainly changed the sport well yeah and, and the lighter weights and uh, mm -hmm. i'm very proud of that you know they all they all come up to me all the older fighters and the heavier fighters i mean the, they all would come up man you open up the doors for for us, Michael, I said, man, thank you. I really appreciate it. So that's a, that's a very great honor. When well, you, world champions and, and fighters, they come up and say, you opened up the doors for us. I mean, that's that's very heartful. I, well, I love it. It's great that they recognize that. Yeah. Yeah. So 12 fights in, you're fighting for the North American Boxing Federation title, your first championship. What do you recall about that? I remember it was a unanimous decision win over uh, Tony DeLuca. What do you remember about that night? Because that had to be, you know, an another milestone for you. Of course, because I knew if I win this title, I win this title, I'm going to get a, a world title shot. And I knew I was fighting against um, Tony DeLuca. Tony DeLuca, he talked a lot. So I, I love that. I said, <laughs> I love it. I love when they talk. I love when they talk shit and now uh, because I'm real quiet. I don't say nothing. I said, okay, we'll see when we get in there. And that was a pretty, he had a lot of experience and uh, that helped me out a great deal. So I thank Tony DeLuca for that too. So yeah, it's not yeah. just a um, beat down. I wanted to give you, I want to give you a worse beat down than I did, but I didn't. It's okay. I still want. Yeah. <laughs> so what's well, up? Something kind of remarkable about your career is you started out on television and almost all of your fights were televised. That's kind of yeah. unusual for a young fighter, especially then. Especially, especially then. So it's like I say, when I look back, I had ABC, I had CBS, NBC, mm -hmm. all of them. I had all of them on national, on national TV. And for me being a little <clears throat> light like that at Junior yeah. Flyway, it just, it was never been done before so it was great it was well, great from that you got a lot of attention you got an endorsement deal with diet pepsi uh big name sponsors big name uh brands how does that impact you as a fighter that that kind of i don't want to say instant celebrity but it was certainly in, not overnight but it did come in, in a wave where you suddenly yeah. had that iconic status how that how's that impact you as a fighter and how do you deal with that mentally Mentally, I, you know what? I just took it as it comes, to tell you the truth, Doug. Everything was about me getting in that ring because I just loved it. I mean, I still miss it. I am I miss the hell out of it right now, Doug. I, I swear I miss it. But because I have my gym and I still work out, I still do all of that. I have the kids there, and um, it's just great to show them the experience and, and give them the knowledge of boxing that I have. And um I just love it. Well, it is hard hard to walk away from, right? Oh yeah, it's, that it's very hard to walk away from. But I, when I did it, that's why I'm so proud because I retired world, world champion, and it was a great fight against Jorge Arce, 
And later on, I was so proud um, for Jorge Arce, him winning the four world titles in four different weight classes. I didn't think he was going to do all that, but I told him after the fight, you don't worry about it because he was young. He was only 22. I was yeah. 32. I was going out. And um, um, he was he, 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 he was out pointing me during that yeah. fight. And um, I knew I was going to catch him. And I, I was going to catch him with that right hand again. I just said, oh, he's coming. I'm going to have him. He made that little mistake of fighting me, yeah. and he kept fighting me. And uh, I caught him again in that 11th round, and it, it, it was a great fight. And um, he just did a whole lot after that and um, I'm glad that I had motivated him after the fight I'm so glad because he was crying and um, I told him you don't worry about it Jorge you're going to be champion again I guarantee you, you'll be champion again and he did what he did unbelievable it well, was great and that fight was similar in tone to um, Alexis Arguello and Ray, Mar Ray Mancini, where Mancini just wasn't quite ready for that for right. that veteran, and he kind right. of fell short, you know. Yeah, that's a that's a very great example of, of a fight with, you know, I had a lot of experience, and he was just a young, young up and coming guy, and he was a great fighter and won the world title and did more than that. So it was great. It was great, and I remember the Lexus Arguello fight with Ray Mancini, yeah. and it's the same thing. Ray Mancini was up and coming, and you know he was only a young kid, and Arguello was already what three time champion, whatever, and he had all that experience. So just a technician. It's just the same way. Yeah, well, that Arce fight, that right hand, that secured you 1999 Ring Magazine Comeback of the Year, right? Yes. And it yeah. was. It was great. I mean, yeah. all the accomplishments that I did, I looked back and I said, man, you know, sometimes you just look and and if I see some of my old fights or I see something and I'm like, man, I yeah. did all that. <laughs> and I, I love it. I just love it. So I was very, very satisfied um, with my career. And it was, it's great. I mean, Thank God. Thank my parents. I, yeah. I just love it. Well, and looking back on it, you probably have a little bit more of an appreciation for it, too. You're you're a little oh, older. You can see it from a different perspective and really understand the impact you made on the sport, but also what the sport, how the sport impacted you. Well, of course. I mean, it's, it's taught me a lot, you know, all, all the life experience of, of traveling and meeting so many different people and, and just getting along. I, yeah. I mean, I love it. I, and I miss I miss the fighting part. <laughs> That's what I miss. But do you miss but, the trading part? Training part. <laughs> I miss the training part. Well, that, that's why I was fighting. And, yeah. um, you know, once you train in there and you, you're in condition, nobody beats you. No, that's, yeah. how, that's the way I felt. And that's how my mentality was. If yeah. I'm in condition... I'm whipping everybody's ass. That's all it is, too. <laughs> well, Marciano said that was he, that's why he worked so hard in the gym, because he knew that was the one thing he could control. He could be in better shape than any guy he got in front of. Yep. That's right. Conditioning has to do a lot with it, it's, especially if you go in the later rounds. I, I just loved it. I loved it. Well, and especially your, your fighting style. I mean, you were such an aggressive fighter. I mean, you you were kind of cut from the same mold as Roberto Duran, where you just yeah. constantly pressed the action and, and took it to the other guy. I mean, that demands that kind of conditioning. Yeah, always. I just loved it. I just loved it. I love to get in there and just tangle at it. Let's see who comes out smarter. Let's see who's smarter. Let's see. And if you're going to stay there and just throw down, that's what I love. Any opponent that came to me, and I was talking all kinds of shit I love too because I said, okay, God damn it, wait till we get in there. I wouldn't say a word. You know, I wouldn't yeah. say a word. I'd just say, okay, we'll see you in the ring. Yeah. We'll find out. All, yeah. all, all that talking doesn't really amount to much at the end of the day. No. no. Yeah. So let's skip ahead to March of 1993. Um, you fought uh, Roberto or Humberto Chico Gonzalez. Um, and that's got to be one of the biggest fights of your career. 
Oh yeah, that was that was a really big fight. It was a big fight for all the lighter weight classes again. I mean, it was a million dollar first and no junior flyweight, not even up to the lightweight had anybody made a million dollars. Straight yeah. out a million dollars. I believe it's from up, up to one thirty five at that time. Right. Way back in ninety three. And that was still I mean, it was unbelievable how me and Chiquita did that and that promoting and just the way that it came out is unbelievable because he was knocking everybody out. I was knocking everybody out. He had the more power. He was supposedly the more powerful puncher. And and there was just and when us two fought and the way we fought, it was um that that was a classic. I it was love a it. Super fight. Yes, it Super was. fight. Yeah, but you, I mean, the critics at that time were like, well, well, Top Rank's manufactured him. He's all hype. He's not really, he's not really the fighter they're making him out to be. So you went in as the underdog, at least in the, the general public's eyes. Right. Yeah, and um, uh, I, would, I would just say, man, just watch this fight right here. If he fights the way he fights, and I've, been, and I've watched him fight, and I said, if he comes like that at me, it's going to be a war. I knew it right off the bat. I said, it's going to be a war. I don't think he expected it because he told me, uh, he told me before the first fight, he says, Michael, don't run from me. He told me. <laughs> and I said, what makes you think I'm going to run from you? You'll see. We'll see on that night who's going to be running from who. Yeah. And he found out. He came at me. He, he did an unbelievable job, knocked me down twice. The first knockdown was a flash, but the the second knockdown, I was hurt. I was yeah. hurt for a long time. I could remember I could not feel my right leg for at oh, least no. uh, at least 30, 40 seconds after I got up. I still could not feel my right leg until I turned that corner. And then once I got my right leg back, I said, okay, this is it. I'm tearing his ass up. <laughs> and I was hurt. I was badly hurt. That's well, again, that, that conditioning allows you to recuperate at, at oh, yeah. that level. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Well, like you say, you dropped it in the, in the second and then in the fifth, and there's that, that memorable photo of you with one arm hanging over the ropes and the other and your legs underneath you. I mean, yeah. classic. Hey, when, you're, when your leg bends like that, you know, most of the time you're out. Yeah. Most of the time. If you look at all the all fight films or anything, and when, when a person's leg bent like that and against the ropes like that, you're yeah. out. When I got when when I found out I didn't even know I was down. When, oh, when really? I found myself uh -huh. on my knees and I banged the the mat, I said, God damn, I'm, I'm down again. <laughs> and I said, shit, I'm getting my ass up. <laughs> yeah. It was a great fight, man. And, just, then you, and then you come back and and stopped him in the seventh round. Yes, I I came back. I knew I was gonna. I would, I had him then. After the after that, like towards the fifth, the end of the fifth round, I said, "That's it. I got him. I got him now." So I I tried box a little bit in the sixth round. Didn't do too much, but I said, yeah. "I know it." I got him, and I said, watch, I'm going to catch him. I know I'm going to catch him. I was just waiting. I had caught him. I had threw a little right hand and left, a little little left hook. I had yeah. turned to the to his side. That's when he fell all the way back to the corner. I said, oh, shit, I got him now. I'm not gonna <laughs> go. I can't. I can't let him go. And he was coming back a little bit until I got him right against the ropes, and I caught him with the left hook and the right hand. And that was it. Well, you're a great finisher. I mean, you had that that punching power and accuracy that you could you could close the show when the time came. That too, because that boy could hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You fought you fought him two more, two more times. Two more times. Um, ew. What was the difference? Why do you? I mean, one was a. I think one was a split decision, and one of them was a majority decision yeah. loss. What uh, was the difference in those fights? Do you feel? He he boxed a little bit. He didn't uh -huh. he didn't want to fight, and I I I could have outboxed him and stood out from the outside, but I didn't. I wanted to fight, so I kept going at him. And it's funny because he he you know what I give him all the credit in the world. I think they knew 
they knew that he was not going to be able to fight me. The way he fights, he's going to have to box me. And, you know, his style was a little difficult because he was left-handed and he was moving around. He's a lot shorter than me. So I think um, when they got Berenstein, Berenstein told him, I think he has troubles against left-handers. When they're short like you, just move from him. Don't fight him because if you fight him, you stay there. It's going to be over. And um, they were smart. And I give Chiquita credit, man. We talked about it before, and, and we laugh about it. But, you know, we're friends when, when we see each other, and uh, we had some great fights. Yeah. Well, you, you make memories. I mean, yeah. but like Gotti Ward, uh, Leonard Ford. Duran, um, Ali Norton, I mean, that, the, that goes down as one of the greatest trilogies of all time. Thank you. All them trilogies, you know, the trilogies are going to be good. I mean, it's just so competitive because both of us want to win, and that's what makes it competitive. And that's when you get them real wars, and you just you just want to stay in there and tear them up. <laughs> but Chiquita fought smart, man. He fought smart, really smart. Yeah. Yeah. So then after, I think after those fights is when you fought Scotty Olson, right? Yeah. Yes. So you, you'd, and you'd met him in the Olympics and beat him in the Olympics. Yes. Scotty was after me since the Olympics. It's, it, it's just so funny because I would always hear his interviews. Yeah, I want Michael Carball. I want Michael Carball. Yeah. Well, man, I come to my weight class. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> fighting that one twelve at 108. Come down and fight. And again, stopped him in the eleventh round. I mean, there's something with you in those those final minutes. I mean, those are those are the championship rounds, right? Uh, yeah, it's it, it's the fact. I went to the body a lot. Nobody really noticed that, but you see, every fight, I was a pure body puncher, and I knew that I was going to wear him down. I but, but the thing about me going to the body, I loved it. I loved working inside, even though I was taller than most of my opponents. And most of them, you only had probably two opponents that were taller than I was at, at that yeah. weight class. Yeah. And uh, I loved going to the body. Even even when they were shorter. I knew it was harder to go to the body when they're shorter, but I still I was still doing that. Yeah. yeah. Fighters just don't do that often enough. Well, what was that? I said, fighters just don't do that often enough. They don't concentrate on that body work, especially early on, you know, put those rounds in the bank to the body. You don't know. You don't know. I mean, even even if you're a power puncher or whatever, man, you go to the body and you just wear him down. But you got to go to the body smart. And, and just a lot of the fighters, they're not as precise as we were back in the day. Like, you know, we always compare fighters back in the day and, and this and that, but preciseness is the best, is the best because if you look what he's throwing at you during the fight, during the fight, you look what he's throwing at you and he's catching you with this or he's catching you with this and he's doing the same thing, you, you go capitalize on that, all of that. There's so much different things that you can capitalize on. And that's what I love to do. And I think I wasn't a power, power puncher, like a natural power puncher. It was my preciseness. Mm -hmm. It was knocking them out. And those are some nasty knockouts. I love yeah. it. <laughs> I love it. It's just, so, it's, it's just a great feeling to knock someone out. Yeah. Because you're just, it. I don't know. I, I always say, man, I can't describe the feeling of knocking someone out. It's it's an unbelievable feeling, man. You just damn. <laughs> that. And, and you can watch the knockout over and over and say, damn, you're so proud of yourself. And I know all the fighters do that. I, yeah. I, not one fighter in this world, when he knocks somebody out, he knows what I'm talking about. That feeling. Yeah. <laughs> they all know. They all know what I'm talking about. And it's the greatest feeling in the world. And you maybe didn't have that one punch knockout power, but you had a, an a unusual power for a guy of your size at that time. Yeah, that's why I said it's the preciseness of the punch and where you're, where you're landing it at. And a lot of people don't know that. But 
you do, there's little parts of the way you throw your punches. But when you're precise like that, and you're studying what, what you're going to hit them with, and you throw those combinations like that, it's, there's not too many fighters that, that have that preciseness. You got Arguello, you got Durant, you got all these guys, you got Ray Leonard. Uh, I'll tell you one thing about Ray Leonard. I guarantee you, I'll tell you this. I know that Ray Leonard became a great, great fighter after that first Duran fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guarantee. After yeah. that, he just started whooping everybody's asses up <laughs> because I know what that did for him. It gave him yeah. a lot of confidence and it gave him that he knew, Leonard knew he had that heart because yeah. he fought a masterful fighter right there in Durant. So that gave him so much confidence in the world and he well, became a great fighter. Well, when he fought him on his terms and it was still that close, that that's telling, you know, you learn from that. Yeah, he did. He'll so that pre so that precision punching, is that something you worked on in the gym or did it just come natural? Was it just a matter of focus and concentration or focus and see and the, <laughs> why you precision is pretty much you're picking your shots. You just don't throw them to throw them. You just don't throw a, a regular jab, right up a good right hand, left to or whatever comes after it. You do, you get them of what you see. Yeah. And that's, I don't think that's where, I know the fighters understand what I'm saying. What you see in there and what, when you're looking for it and you say, okay, I can catch him with this. Okay, then I'll throw this or I'll think this one and throw this one and then come back with the one that I'm gonna catch him with. And it works all the time. Yeah, setting up those punches. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you gotta do. All, all the fighters gotta do that. Once you set that up and once you're calm in there and relax and just let your punches go where they're just natural, you're just letting them go. Now that's when you're gonna have a good fighter. It's the ability to be relaxed too. I always say, you know what? You know, people say, well, who's this trainer? Who's that guy's trainer? Who's this trainer or this trainer? I go, look, it don't matter who his trainer is. He's the fighter. He makes the trainer. The fighter makes the trainer. People don't understand where that's coming, but the fighter makes the trainer. Yeah. Unless you have so much experience and you got that experience of fighting, then you give it to, to your fighter, to whoever you want you're teaching. You give that to them. And and that's the way it is. Then then see, that's why I say all these trainers, you know, a lot of them didn't have that boxing experience, but you know what? It's be a lot of them, like I don't know all, all the great trainers that you want to talk about that they had that had all these champions. I said, well, them champions made him look good. So once once you get one champion, one world champion, believe me, you'll get a lot of them coming to you. Well, a perfect yeah. example is Angelo Dundee. And all he said it himself. He said, he said, you're only as good as the guy sitting on the stool in front of you. That's right. I mean, he said it. And if he, he's one of the greatest, he's considered one of the greatest trainers of all time. So if he's, he puts it in that perspective, you got to think that's, that's reality. That's true. that's true. Just like, as I said, the fighter makes the train. Well, I want to go back to a little bit and talk about your training methods. Um, you know, it was unusual. You, you didn't train in a, a commercial gym. It no. was all done with you and your brother in your backyard. Right. right. Talk about that setup and why that worked for you so well. Cause it doesn't for all people. You know, I think there's a certain, I believe working out at home, in your own conditions is very different than a gym. It's good for some people, some it's not. Some people in that home setting, they don't have that electricity, that excitement that is popping in a gym. So you have to create it. You, I think you almost have to work that much harder, you know, to kind of create that le electricity and excitement and that momentum in your workout. So talk about that a little bit. Well, see, the thing is, in my perspective, I love fighting. So it don't matter where the gym is. I didn't care where the gym is, the backyard gym, the, all this and that stuff. I just love to fight. So that made it easier for, for my estranged brother. My estranged brother wasn't in the, 
in the gym with me, uh, like always, like the TV shows and all that. He was just there for sparring. Right. Other than that, he, he he put me through a training regimen, and I would go do it. I would go do it all alone yeah. until the sparring. When the sparring came, he came. That's how he was there with me throughout that whole time. Yeah. Throughout my whole training, he he was never in the backyard with me. When I was trained, I trained by myself. And he knew. He knew that I was going to do all that hard work and even work harder. He didn't have to be there, and he knew that. Yeah. So um, the only time he was really there is when the TV was there. <laughs> when the TV was there. Or with the sparring. So the only time he was really at the gym with me is the my sparring sessions. Yeah. Other than that, I was in the gym by myself in the backyard. I mean, if somebody, if one of my sparring partners, if, if he had brought sparring partners in, then, you know, they would come to the gym. But we would always be at, at, at different times. I was always pretty much by myself training. Yeah. And that's that's what I explain to the kids. You got to love it. You you want to fight. You don't you don't have you know like a lot of fathers. A lot of fathers come up and and have you know they pretty much make their kids go. I mean right. you can't make them do it. You know you can't force them to do it. Let them do what they want to do. See that's why my father was so smart. All my brothers, all my brothers, my father taught them. He taught them all how to fight. And and there was a few of them wanted to fight. But you know what it was? It was that determination. It was the love of it. Okay? You you got to love what you what you want to do. And and that's the way I see it. And I had all of that in um I know all the fighters that are world champions, they totally understand what I'm saying because that's what they wanted. They wanted it. They they love to do it. And, you know, you get kids. I tell you what, you get kids and you have a father that has forced them and he, he you know what happens? He falls in love with it. Yeah. But not all of them. A lot of them that are world champions now, I guarantee you, they do. They they're gonna tell you the same thing that I said. Well, I wanted it, and I love to fight, and that's what I wanted. All these fighters that are great, that's what they wanted. Look, I'm gonna be better than him. And, and you bring him in front of me, him in front of me. I don't care. I'm whipping his ass, and that's all it is to it. That's what I say all the time. Every time I got in the ring. I said it to myself, I'll whip in your ass, and that's all it is to it. <laughs> that's what I used to do in the ring all the time. Every single time when that fight was about to begin, your mind, I'm whipping your ass, that's all it is to it. I'm not going to say it out loud to him. I just knew it. it was right here. Right here, my conditioning, and bam, I'm whipping your ass, that's it. Well, and like a trainer, a gym doesn't, doesn't make a fighter. I mean, you can have all the highest technology and be the most advanced of, in equipment and everything else, but it really comes down to, I mean, you you just really had the, the basics, right? Right, right. It's not fancy. No, nothing fancy. You don't need anything fancy, any, anything. It's, it's the love of fighting or the love of playing basketball or the love of playing football. You have to love that, and you, you have to love the contact of it. See, that's what a lot of a lot of the kids, you know, at, at times, it's what you're going to withstand. Can you withstand everything? That's what you become a great fighter. When you know, okay, I can withstand all the punishment, whatever they hit me with, you bring it on. I withstand it. I'm whipping your ass. <laughs> that's it. So that's the way I, I teach these kids. And I say, look. You're going to take it, whatever it is, your first sparring session, whatever it is, just go in there, relax, and just tear them up. I tell each and everyone that's sparring, the, one, the kids that are going to spar each other, tear them up. Yeah. Just relax in there, tear them up and learn. And be friends afterwards. 
That's right. That's right. Your teammates. Now you mentioned you're a stranger brother. I want to put that in context. I want to talk. I don't want to talk a lot about it or dwell on it. But okay. I think for for fighters, coaches, uh, managers, their support system, it's so important to have the right people around you. you have, um, yeah. Just not just mentally, but but financially, physically. Uh, what did if you could just kind of briefly give an overview of what happened with your brother, why he's estranged and, and maybe some warning signs you could have seen as a fighter that others might learn from. There was never, for me, um, there was never a warning sign. Mm. I'll tell you why. Cause I thought me and Danny had almost like a father son relationship. Mm. I thought it was close. He would never screw me over, never, never. I didn't have to worry about it. That's my brother. Later on, after my career was over and everything, I mean, I was happy. I was satisfied. How, yeah, I, you know, everything was fine. Yeah. I met my, my, my girlfriend now 16 years ago. I met her in 2006, I believe. Uh -huh. And uh, she told me, she I don't know what, she she just had a funny feeling. She told me, hey, Michael, I think Danny's stealing from you. I said, I got I got totally mad. I got pissed off, right? I said, how are you going to do that? He's my brother. How is he going to do that? You know, I had warning signs before. I had warning signs from my father, but I never believed it. So uh -huh. what makes, you know, I didn't ever believe my girlfriend. So my girlfriend told me. She goes, okay, Michael, um, I think he is. And I said, you really think so? But I got pissed off. I got an argument with her. And then she gave me some advice. She goes, go to go to the bank. Check all your records. Get all your records from 10 years back. But I didn't tell her I was going to do it. And I went and did it. Boy, I, I went crazy. I went crazy. You know, I wanted to kill him. I wanted to do everything. But I was just so smart enough, not even to go that way. I took it through the courts. We're still going through the courts. Unbelievable. 16 years now, and we're still going to the courts. It's crazy. That now, had I, to be a shock to trust somebody at that level and to find out all those years after your shock, career's over. Shock, shock and a half, man. I, yeah. was, I mean, I was, uh, I, I was crying. I was so pissed off i was like man you know what and to all that time i was calm even even when i would go talk to him or, or i'd act like nothing act like mm -hmm. nothing and then he found out but he knew wow. he knew when i met laura because i remember what he said you don't tell her anything you don't let her get into any kind of stuff or anything personal or anything this i go what are you talking about danny well, she's asking about the gym. Well, yeah, she she has a foundation. She wants to, you know, she she wants me to go speak to these kids. Okay, you, you just don't worry about it. And that's that was a long time ago. I didn't even think about it till all this shit started happening. Yeah. And, um, but I, I'm so glad that I ended up being with her. And hey, she, you know, I had warning signs from my dad. But I never believed my father. I never believed. I just never believed anybody. You know, they they would tell me, and I I never did. So I'm glad I believed Laura. And I said, God dang, this is crazy. When I first found out, I was you don't know how mad I was. It was just so crazy. But I said, you know what? I'm just going to calm myself down. It's going to come back to him. And. And I said, I'll wait for as long as it comes out. I just want some justice here. I don't care about the money, all the money he stole or whatever. Forget all that. I've accomplished what I accomplished. I'm a world champion, and I'm satisfied with that until I get justice. Yeah. And that's all I want. Yeah, you just, you just never good. think that of somebody that that's close to you. Right. You know? that you, I would never, never have thought it. Never. Just like I told my dad, he's not stealing from me. Why do you think so? I said, and he goes, you just be careful. You just watch out. But I didn't watch out. I wasn't careful like my dad told me to be. But you know what? 
that's the way it goes and yeah. and that's over with now i just get through it the way i am day by day and see what happens with it and i'm i'm happy well father knows best right mm -hmm. but at the end of the day i mean like you said you still have your legacy and that's worth all the money in the world for some guys yeah. let's and talk about your final title you won the wbo world lightweight title we talked a little bit about that jorge arce fight um stopped him and then walked away from the sport you retired on top with a work off a world title win that's that's just so unusual what what sparked that why what, what made you go i'm done i've accomplished all i want to accomplish i'm hanging the gloves up see what i knew i knew right when i lost i had lost to my lala to jacob my lala i had lost uh, mm -hmm. I lost um, WBO titles. To Is him. that the first time you ever? You, it's the only time you ever stopped, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I got stopped by cuts. On cuts. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my life. I, I, yeah. He was. He was. He was a good guy. Um, rest in peace. You know, he passed away on a heart attack years ago, and I'm um, too bad. But um, he was a difficult opponent. He was. He was only four foot two. <laughs> Four, no, 411, I'm sorry. He's like punching down. Yeah, it was way down, but I, I just fought him on the inside. And yeah. uh, he had a hard head, so, you know, he, <laughs> my, my Lala couldn't punch, but he threw a whole lot of them, a whole lot of them. And he couldn't punch hard enough to open up all those cuts I had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did he cut me with? But his head, that's what he cut you with. <laughs> <laughs> that that third that third punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was some sneaky ones, no, but they weren't I don't think they were intentional or anything like that. So, you know, he he, he won the fight and I give him credit for that. And you know, anytime anytime that uh, you beat me up, you're gonna get a whole lot of credit for it. And yeah. um I love it because I'm not a bad sport. What happened happened and um uh, I just go on. And then I had retired, I but I didn't say anything after I lost to my Lala. I you had retired. like, is that like you had like a 19 month layoff after that? Not, yeah. It like a year, year and a half, yeah. It was 97. I came back in 99 and I had four fights and then they told me I was gonna fight Jorge Arce. Top rank was bringing Jorge Arce, Arce up, by the way, uh -huh. I think yeah. he was my name. Whoops. I think top rank said, okay, let's put Michael Carbohan with Jorge Arce, our, our new champion here. Yeah. Yeah, and then he, if he beats Michael, then he got some name. So I know that's what top rank was doing, but I didn't care. I said, hell yeah, give me that world title. I'm at the apple cart. Yep. I'm going to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to tear him up. I'm going to knock him out. And it was so funny because of top rank, and I knew what top rank was doing, and and you know i still give top rank all the credit in the world what they have done for me but when they gave me that jorge arce i said that was a mistake you made <laughs> i know what you want but it was a mistake and uh jorge arce went on and did a lot for top rank after that and and you know he had, he had a great 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 career and you know he just made me look good so i give him all that <laughs> it's a good way to go out so was that your thinking you're just like i'll just go out on top i'm not gonna lie i said look at who i beat yeah i didn't be no slouch right i beat a world champion no world champion in wow four titles four different weight classes yeah unbelievable yeah. that says love, a lot about you right i yeah. love it so Life after boxing has been good to you. You were inducted into the International Boxing Hall of Fame 2006. Um, and now you're running a gym that's like right across from your house, right? Right, right across the street. Yeah. It was and an how, old church back in the day. Uh, and how long have you been doing that? Since 93. Wow. 93, we opened up that gym. I still had the backyard gym. I would still come to the backyard gym. I did that for the kids and community. Yeah. And uh, it's been open since. Yeah. So well, we're doing good. Is it still called the 7th Street Gym or 
No, it's called Michael Carbajal's Ninth Street Gym. Very Ninth Street Gym. That's what it was. Yeah. Now it's awesome. called, it was called Carbajal's Ninth Street Gym, but I changed it to Michael Carbajal. Michael. <laughs> because of my strange brother, you know they For had sure. a thing. So I said, no, nope, it's going to be Michael Carbajal's Ninth Street Gym. So they'll know whose gym it is. Yeah, it gives it some distinction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, good. Hopefully we'll get out there and visit you guys sometime. We're still there every day. I'll be there later today. I love it. Yeah. I just love it. Well, it's awesome you give back, give it back to the sport. I love it to see fighters do that because, again, you've got the most to pass on. You know, having been there, done that, you've got your life experiences and all the things you've gone through and learned yeah. that you can give on to that next generation. Uh, I can help all these kids. Hey, if one of them becomes a world champion, and by just with my help, I would love that too. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. Well, yeah. Awesome. We'll, we'll see that. You know, it, it takes a lot of time. And see, I understand that. I understand that. You know, I, I don't want a world champion right away or a, a real good amateur fighter right away. I want to teach them and teach them the right way and give them all the philosophy of boxing that I have. I want to, I want to have them and, and know. See, I, I give them all of it. I just don't give them the boxing part of it. You know, it all depends on the ages that they are, too. So, you know, the, all the little ones are a little too little and right. they're too young. You, you just never know. Even with the teenagers, you, you never know. They just can change right off the bat. And I tell them that you guys got to stay motivated and you really want, you got to want it. And you're going to have to withstand it. Yeah. That's the one thing. You yeah. have to withstand it. Hopefully, we'll see the next incarnation of Michael Carbajal come out of that gym. Hopefully, we will. We will. There's, there's going to be a lot of us. There's going to be a lot of us, uh, of us world champions. That there's going to be other world champions that are compared to us, just like we're compared to other fighters, other yeah. world champions. And uh, it's going to keep on going. Boxing is for life. And Phoenix is ready for another boxing, boxing icon. Life. Uh, <laughs> boxing's not going anywhere and and we're getting some gr good fights out here now yeah and we're getting some title fights out here now and that's great i i, I love to see that yeah. yeah good for the sport so Fair. michael how can people to title viewers followers find you on social media and, and support what you're doing your efforts out there it's um mike it's michael carball 6x at gmail.com. Six, six X for six time world champion. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, your story, your journey in particular, you know, it touches on and captures about everything a fighter could experience in life in and out of the, in and out of the ring. I appreciate you being so transparent and, and, and talking with us today. Thank you, Doug. I appreciate you guys for having me. Thank you guys. I love it that your gym's all title. I got I got to throw that in. I, I, God, that's right. That's hey, way we cool. We get it. We get it all. I love it. I love it. Michael, we, thanks for an awesome career and thanks for talking with us today. Thank you. Take Bye. Care. Bye. Take care. Thank you for watching this episode of Title Unboxed. If you're anything like me, you can never get too much boxing. So if you'd like to watch more episodes, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and on our Title Boxing YouTube page.